Well, good, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop, welcoming you back to another Kitchen Counter Thrift Hall. Today on the Kitchen Counter, uh, we've got a variety of things. Some you saw me thrift just yesterday, if you watched me going all around the town, and some of the things you haven't seen before. Well, let's begin with what I don't want you looking at yet, and that's right over there. Quit looking at that. Don't look at that. Well, then why am I showing it to you? Okay, you can look at it. This is all coming back in the autumn season. That's the reason why I say don't pay too much attention to it now. There is Fancy uh, Turkey. One of my wonderful subscribers loves it when I find this without the top because she refers to that as the Fancy Turkey Toilet. And you can see why. But thankfully with this one, we found the glass top in Amberina. Again, that's coming back. If you're new to my channel, uh, every autumn I do big, I think, exciting autumn sales. And I start collecting early in the spring because I have to get start curating the stuff and listing it and getting photographs done all through the month of August so that I'm ready uh, as soon as September hits. An amber piece of crackle glass. Again, I'm not going to go too long. Here's that... Ewer, did I get it right? Thank you for the lesson, everyone. This is growing on me, and it's a piece of Hager pottery. Um, so now I know what a female sheep is, and uh, what you call this thing. Y Ewer? Ewer? Okay. Hey, I went back and Mr. Pheasant was there, so uh, somebody else said it's Royal Copley, and they have a set of them, which is great. You saw... Uh, this wonderful 1930s English piece of pot of uh, pottery, it's a creamer. I love that. I'm going to throw that up for sale in my uh, autumn sale. Just this morning in the thrift shop, I found another lamp base. This is looking a little on the McCoy side, and you can see I'm going to talk about one of my, one of my several books near, at the end of the video, so I hope you'll stay tuned for that. I'm not sure if it's McCoy or not. I haven't looked through my book yet. And... Of course, I don't expect there to be a mark on it, and we can see back here it was originally drilled as a lamp base. Mm-hmm. I will be turning it back into a lamp with an antique socket and an old cord, and it's going to be f fabulous. And then um, the ten black glass plates, black amethyst. Pick your pick, whatever you want. You all know that oftentimes when you get up uh, with a strong light behind it, you will see purple, and we can see some purple or some amethyst coming through that. I have ten of the... I have eight of these. Yeah, eight. Eight grill plates. Really pretty much luncheon plates. And another subscriber was saying, we need to invent a new use for grill plates because I think they're kind of the... Uh, they're sort of forgotten about. What do you think? Do you guys like grill plates or not? It's good for portion control. We'll see them again in the autumn. Wait till I get this on a, an orange tablecloth. You're going to love it. Okay. Now here's the new stuff. Let's get the light over here. Wow. Wow. These candlesticks look as though they are black, but they are amethyst and they are made by Fenton. And Fenton made candlesticks just like this in the 1920s, and I think they used the same molds when they reissued these. This is marked Fenton on the bottom, and it's right there on that point, you can see. I can't point to it, but I think you can see Fenton. Uh, it is, it is a, uh, an amethyst color, we can see there. And uh, as I said, they were making these candlesticks during the uh, 20s and 30s. I've got some old originals. This is a, a re reissue sometime after 1971. Those two amethyst candles. I bought those a couple of days ago and then today in another thrift shop this is not Fenton 
but it matches it so beautifully. It's a wonderful amethyst plate, and it's got the silver overlay, or platinum, probably silver, and uh, stylized flowers there. Wouldn't this look great on the center of your dining room table? With that in the middle and then the two amethyst candlesticks on either side. I'm not selling it together as a set because it wasn't issued that way, but you get the idea. There's that green cake plate back there, which I haven't done any study on yet, but there it is all cleaned up. Wonderful at Christmas time. Or any time. And that's, that's one I've never seen before. I've never seen that, that particular plate before. Boy, have I been finding cranberry glass. Here's a wonderful ruffled edge, crimped edge uh, uh, cranberry glass with sort of a pumpkin looking bottom. Could be cranberry, could be uh, pilgrim glass. Uh, could be Fenton too. And I haven't gone through my Fenton book to see. So I'll be studying up on that. There's a lot of wear on the bottom of it. You see all that wear? around the base where it's been, you know, s sliding across Granny's kitchen table for years and years. Very nice. Uh, let's see. It has, yeah, there's no damage on that at all. By the way, none of this has been photographed. It's all washed, but I haven't photographed or listed anything, which is somewhat unusual for me, but uh, it happens. It happens. Okay, three pieces of lovely depression glass serving little serving pieces accessory pieces all made by the same company and in the same pattern here's a little three-footed uh, platform to put on whatever you'd like now a lot of times you say oh well there must have been a cheese there must have been a, <sighs> a, li a little dish that sits there you know what I'm trying to say there is an indent so there probably was a cup that sat here for sauces, mayonnaise, but uh, even though it's no longer with it, you could still use it just like that. That's the kind of affair I'm talking about, but this wouldn't sit on there. There's a divided serving dish also for mints and nuts and olives and cheeses. And here you can put your lemon wedges on that. Beautiful glass with gold overlay. This is going to be made by one of the companies in the 1930s that made Elegant Depression Glass, and we all know uh, the names of those different companies. What am I going to do with just one plate, one berry bowl, and one cup and saucer? Well, I'm a firm believer that whether you live alone or whether you live in a family of 20, you can have fancy pantsy every day, and that's all I've got. That little, pe that little set right there. Wouldn't that be lovely to start your morning off with some fresh fruit, your bacon and eggs on here, and a nice cup of coffee? Just that one little set, that's it. Yeah, it's, there are no chips or cracks. It's not crazed. It's lovely stuff made in England. The pattern is called Lucerne. And... All right. You're going to want to not focus for me. So it's anyway, Colonial Pottery, Stoke, England. And that back stamp is going to date, date this dainty little pattern to just before or right around the turn of the century. So we're talking 1890s to 1910, something like that. And I have to laugh because another subscriber said, Scott, you know, you always say the turn of the century. But are you talking about 1999 to 2000 or 1899? to 1900. Well, most of us my age, when we say turn of the century, we think about the turn of the 19th into the 20th century, and I'm probably always going to say turn of the century, meaning 1899 to 1900. The little bowl, Noritake uh, bowl, and under plate, we saw, probably for sauce. This was meant for the Western market and uh and uh you know exported out out of japan we already talked about this yesterday uh it, and it's nice especially because we have matching it's a they're mat you know, they're, it's a matching set uh from boy we loved our dutched 
theme in our kitchens in the in this country. How many of you remember Dutch stuff in your mother's kitchen or your grandmother's kitchen? It was on tea towels and and decals that stuck on cabinets and even on sugar shakers. I don't know where that fascination came from, but there it is. Uh, probably a, again, I'm going to look through my kitchen glass book. I don't know, that might be a hawking piece. I don't remember who made this, but I'll look it up. I don't often find sugar shakers, and that's why I bought just this one. Because it's uh, something I don't see. Who remembers these from the 50s? These little baked crab. Now, these are made of glass. It's glass bake, right? Okay, and so uh, they're glass and wonderful, of course, for your baked crab. Okay, in the oven. But think outside of the box because wouldn't it be great, even if you're just serving uh, sh shrimp or fish, these could be little individual uh, serving dishes for hot butter or tartar sauce. Squirt some cocktail sauce in all of them at your next seafood dinner if you don't want to bake crab in those. I love these. A little bit of paint loss here and there and maybe a little bit of roughness but no major chips or damage on any of those. I love it. A big glass cookie jar back there in pink which is hard to see with all of the squares behind it. The Hollywood squares in black and mint. I know that's distracting. Um, a nice size cookie jar. And yes, I know this wonderful condition. The lid, oh, it is chipped up. Let's take a look. Look under there. Chip, chip, chip. Chip ahoy. All right, lots of chips. Not a big deal to me because my uh, rule of thumb is if you see chips where you put your lips, forget it. Now I know you can grind glass down and if it's something really valuable, you can get it repaired. But I think kitchen glass collectors are a little more forgiving when it comes to something like chips in the lid of a cookie jar because how many naughty children snuck into the kitchen? Wait a minute, it's not snuck, it snuck. My mother always corrected me. The word is sneaked. I know it doesn't sound right, but there's no such proper English word as snuck. So imagine the naughty children who sneaked into the kitchen and very quietly get out of those cookies. Granny always knew, didn't she? All right, so there's chips in the lid. I'm happy to have a lid and a nice big cookie jar made by the Philadelphia Manufacturing Company. I've had these before. Here's another set of mid-century bookends in the shapes of music lyres. They're very heavy, very well made. They are marked PMC on the back for Philadelphia Manufacturing Company, which I think moved to Florida at some point in its history and continued to be called the Philadelphia Manufacturing Company. Those are nice bookends with a lacquered a patina and a lacquered finish. I really like those. And as I said, it'd be a nice gift for a uh, music collector. All right, let's do a quick book review. Oh, by the way, none of it's listed yet. I know. Uh, I'm going to be working on that tomorrow because we might get some rain, which means my Thursday morning flea market plans have changed. So I'll try to get this stuff listed for you 
and up in the old curiosity shop. The link to my store is always in the description box right below the video. Okay, let me bear with me for just a second and I'll be right back. Okay, it was requested of me to begin sharing some of the books that I like to use in my collection and a lot of these if you've been around for a while you'll already be familiar with them. Uh, as I said, I'm going to be looking through the McCoy book to see if that's a McCoy lamp base right there. I don't know yet, but this is uh, the McCoy book I'll be using. McCoy Pottery, Collector's Reference Guide. This is uh, Margaret Hansen and Craig Neeson. Oh, and Bob Hansen. Okay. I think this is, is this Collector's Books? It is. And at Borders, many years ago, it was uh, $17.95. Alright, so I'll be flipping through that. You know I love books as reference guides. Alright, let's do... let's not look at that yet. Somebody did ask me... Uh, they said in a question, Scott, I'm having a hard time identifying patterns in glass. Now we know there are depression glass books, that's easy, right? We can find those patterns quickly and easy, but what about, you know, just etched glassware or just random patterns of glass? This, in my opinion, is the best series. Now I have volume two, three and four. I haven't picked up volume one yet, and I don't know how far it goes past volume four. I don't know if there's a five or a six. Easy identification for glassware in 1900 to 1960. And that's the era that I love, those years, of course. And so this, uh, this is going to be Jean and Kathy Florence. We know who they uh, were. I say, well, I know Jean Florence has passed. I don't know about Kathy. Um, why do I like these three books so much? Color pictures. The photography is fantastic. And you're going to be able to just sit back in your lounge chair and flip through these and you're going to find 90% oh, of the glass that you're going to run into in secondhand shops and thrift shops manufactured from 1900 to about 1960. And we see a little bit of everything. Um, one of the things I enjoy doing if I'm relaxing in the evening, listening to music, the radio, or maybe watching some other thrifters on TV, is I'll just put one of these books on my lap and just start flipping through it. And you go, aha! I saw that piece of glass yesterday and I had no idea what it was. And you see it. Like this crackle stuff we see all the time. Ellie Smith, 1925. I've got that in the cabinet in green. So I love this series. There's some opalescent, National Glass Company. Anyway, you get the idea. You're going to love this series of books. Um, as I said, I'm still trying to find volume one and uh, I wanted to share those with you. Uh, let's see, the publisher again is Collector's Books. I know I went quickly. The uh, authors, I'm trying to find it in print to show you Jean and Kathy Florence, okay? All right, there you go. And two more books very quickly and we'll wrap it up. I want to also give a shout out. This is another one, 50 Years of Collectible Glass, 1920 to 1970. This is volume one and I only have volume one. Uh, Tom and Nyla Breedhoft, and this is also, uh, this is, uh, the publisher is on this one. Well, I've given you the name of the authors and the title of the book, Easy Identification. This, um, I prefer the Florence book over to this one. We have a lot of black and white in here, which is not bad. Let's see? And this one is a little more repetitive in terms of you're going to find a lot of the depression patterns that are easily identifiable in depression glass books. So still, if you find it and can pick it up, I, it's nice to have. It's always nice to have 
as many references as you can. And then finally, I said I hadn't looked that little guy up yet. It won't take long. We're going to go back to Jean Florence again. Kitchen glassware of the Depression identifications. Forget the values because nothing is valued today uh, like it was years ago. But I'll be able to find, in fact, there it is. We're doing it right on the spot. There it is right there. There's the, uh, there's the sugar, there's the sugar shaker. You see that? The little Dutch. And we can see it came on a, a little tr carrying tray there. And, uh, let's see, that's page 185. So page 185. Uh, Hawking Glass Company. Okay, that's fired on Dutch. Yeah, that's it right there. Okay, so it is a Hawking piece, and now it's identified. Uh, wonderful. Okay, so anyway, wanted to show you that book as well. That happens to be the fifth edition. This is Collector's Books. Okay, if you um, have uh, other books you want to recommend, leave them in the description box below. And as always, I want to thank everyone for watching. Get your air conditioning uh, in uh, tuned up. We hit 88 in Philadelphia today. And don't you know, three or four days ago, I had the heater on in the car. But it's springtime and that's what we're in for. Okay. Have fun. Be safe. So long, folks. I'm Scott from the old Curiosity Shop saying thanks for watching. And so long for now.